we have two white points and two black points. The underlying distribution from which these points have been drawn could be anything. Can we say anything about the underlying distribution by just looking at the data set? As this is a simulation, let's say the underlying distribution is this. Now let's look at a fixed decision boundary, which says that all points on this side are white and all points on this side are black. This decision boundary is going to misclassify these three points, hence we color them red. It is going to correctly classify this point, hence we color it green. Three points got misclassified out of four. By using 0-1 loss, we can say that the training error of this particular hypothesis is 0.75. This is also known as the in-sample error. The true error is how the hypothesis performs on the true distribution. As this is a simulation, we know what the true distribution is and hence we know what the true error is. True error is also known as the population error or the out of sample error. We can also think of this as just the probability of misclassifying a new data point drawn independently from the same distribution. As we can see, when we have just 4 data points, the training error is not a good proxy of the true error. As we increase the sample size, we notice that the training error gets closer and closer to the true error. So no matter what the distribution is, or what the hypothesis is, the true error is always going to be some unknown constant between 0 and 1. So again, as the sample size increases, the training error gets closer and closer to the true error. Therefore, for any distribution and for any hypothesis, as m goes to infinity, the training error goes to the true error. This is a manifestation of the law of large numbers. It can be shown that the expected value of the training error is the true error. This is an asymptotic result. Knowing this is not very useful. It would be nice if we are able to know a finite value of m for which the training error would most probably be approximately close to the true error. We can do this by using the Hofding's inequality. Let us say we have a dataset of size 100. We select epsilon at 0.1. Epsilon is how we define being approximately close. Let us substitute the values of m and epsilon. The answer is 0.271. This can be read as the probability of the bad event happening is at most 0.271 where by bad event we mean that the difference between the training error and the true error is more than 0.1. Let us now look at this in more detail. In this expression, epsilon is a constant. The true error is also some constant between 0 and 1. So it is important to note that the training error is the source of randomness in this expression. The training error depends on what dataset we have drawn. To understand this better, let us now look at the dataset space. Every point in this space is a possible dataset of size m. This is a very high dimensional space. These are some good events where the dataset is such that the difference between the training error and the true error is less than epsilon. These are some bad events, where the difference is more than epsilon. In the dataset space, we will color all misleading datasets red. Getting such terrible misleading datasets is possible but not probable. The Hofding's inequality tells us that the total red area is going to be at most 0.271, assuming that the area of the dataset space is 1. 
Also, we can say the white area is at least 0.729. In other words, the probability of the good event happening is at least 0.729. As we increase m from 100 to 300, the red area gets smaller exponentially. We don't know what the red area looks like. What we know is that the red area is going to be at most 0.005 and the white area is at least 0.995. A good data scientist obviously knows this. The data scientist is currently in a meeting with the domain expert. They have a supervised classification problem to solve. Together, they discuss and finalize all the features which they think would be predictive of the labels. For example, these are some predictive features and these are some terrible features. The data scientist assumes that there exists some unknown distribution. They then choose a hypothesis class in which they believe contains a hypothesis with a low true error. This toy hypothesis class has just four hypotheses. These two things have been selected based on whatever prior knowledge the data scientist has about the learning task. All this has been done before collecting the dataset. Let's say that the data scientist has enough money to collect 300 data points, which they assume are drawn independently from the unknown distribution. Now, the data scientist has a dataset and a hypothesis class. They can now check how each hypothesis performs on the dataset. That is, they calculate the training errors of each of the four hypotheses and then they select the hypothesis with the lowest training error. This is called empirical risk minimization or ERM. The lowest training error is 0.1533, but the true error is what we really care about. The data scientist would be satisfied and happy if the true error of the hypothesis selected by ERM is within 0.1 of the training error. Therefore, Epsilon is 0.1. Now, the data scientist recalls for any distribution and for any fixed hypothesis, when the dataset size is 300 and when Epsilon is 0.1, the probability of getting a bad dataset is at most 0.005. In other words, the red colored area is at most 0.005. The hypothesis class has four hypotheses. The red area of each of the four hypotheses is going to be at most 0.005. So the total red area is going to be at most 0.020. White colored area is going to be at least 0.980. Therefore, the dataset which the data scientist has drawn is not misleading for any of the four hypotheses with a probability of at least 0.980. A dataset which is not misleading for any of the hypotheses in the class is called an Epsilon representative dataset. Epsilon representative datasets are colored white in the dataset space. Using these two statements, the data scientist concludes the true error of the hypothesis chosen is approximately close to 0.1533 with a probability of at least 0.980. This is a great guarantee. The data scientist can now breathe a sigh of relief. As we have the benefit of this being a simulation, we know what the true distribution is. The dataset which the data scientist had drawn is indeed Epsilon representative. This is not surprising and was expected. Let us look at a few more Epsilon representative datasets. 
This is a data set which is simultaneously misleading for two hypotheses. This tells us that the red areas overlap. Some data sets are simultaneously misleading for all four hypotheses. So when we say that the white area is at least 0.980, we are assuming the worst case scenario where the red areas do not overlap. What would have happened had the data scientist chosen a hypothesis class of all lines passing through the origin? This new hypothesis class is more flexible. We can now fit the data better to get a lower training error. Therefore, the approximation error has gone down. This is a good news. The bad news is that the estimation error has gone up. As the hypothesis class has infinite hypothesis, the Hofding's bound gives us a vacuous result. Now, we do not have a guarantee that ERM will work. This statement tells us nothing. The data scientist would have been very disappointed. If we empirically look at different data sets of size 300, we find that most of them are epsilon representative and the ones which are misleading are simultaneously misleading for an infinite number of hypotheses. This again tells us that there are massive overlaps. The current measure of complexity fails to take these overlaps into account. Let us now look at a more realistic distribution. 